views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow, everybody, welcome. It's so great to have you tuning us in, turning us on. Thank you. Yes, and this is the Dr. Pat Show Talk Radio to Thrive By. I want to thank all of you for chatting with us. Also, I do want to thank everybody, everybody out there um, that has been listening to the show. And for those of you that uh, emailing us from Australia, you're absolutely right. We are on 25 channels in Australia. And I do mention Australia. And yes, uh, every once in a while, you'll hear hear me just absolutely kill that accent, which I do not know how to do. But thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. doesn't matter where you're listening from. It just uh, is so much of an honor to be here with all of you and get to do what I do and to connect you with some of the most incredible people on the planet. What a beautiful gift this has been for me uh, now 13 years being able to do this. And what a great team, you know, behind the scenes that you guys have not met yet and we will make sure you do that but today today's show is is really so much fun to have sunny dawn johnston joining me here today again i love having her on the show because what we're talking about beyond everything else that you've heard about her and her do if you've heard about uh, whether she is this amazing spiritual counselor or psychic intuitive or best-selling author or international speaker, one of the things you're going to know that is so true is that her belief, which I love, is that everyone has the power within to create, transform, and heal. Yes. And didn't we just talk about that to set the stage for today? You know, whether she has been on our show, has been on Coast to Coast, our buddies out there, or it doesn't really matter sharing the stage with people like Michael Beck, Beckwith and others. It is her fabulous message and, and I want to say, a uh, chutzpah that we get to join in and cheer on so that each and every one of us has the courage to stand within our own realm of empowerment and gifts. Today, the love never ends. This is her latest messages from the other side. We are opening up the phone lines. Yes, we're going to take your calls because it's really not about us. It really is about all of you out there. So let's do that right now, Mr. Benny. We're going to do live on-air e-readings. You're going to get to experience what Sunny does so amazingly well as we talk about the invitation. What is this invitation? What does this mean? You know, is is spirit or guardian angels, are they, are they kind of looking and saying, oh, people, please. Open up your ears. Listen, we're here. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. Sunny, it's so great to have you here. Welcome to the show. Yay. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here as well. Yay. Yay. (laughs) Yay. I want to ask you a question before we jump into the book and, you know, let everybody know. I I want to ask you this question. I know that you and I have chatted before, and it's always great to have you here. I would love to know, here you are, another fabulous book. What has been the, 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 your, your top learning this past year? And what do I mean by that? If you had to pick one or two things that you thought about, oh, man, 
you know, now I'm getting to learn about this. What would that be for this past year or so? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> Thanks. Let's just start with the easy one. Um, <laughs> You know, I think really it is a great question because I think a lot of times people look at uh, people that do this kind of work and they think that we're kind of immune to the learning just because we're a teacher. Uh, And that is not the reality. The truth is that those of us that are teaching, the reason that we teach is because it's what we need to learn, right? So um, I would say trust. Uh, I've found myself over the last several months, um, I've had a lot of personal experience is happening. My son was going to get married in July, and uh, his fiance and him broke up three weeks before, and then three weeks later, his best friend died in a motorcycle accident, which was just two weeks ago. So we've had a very um, up and down summer, and what I've heard myself and found myself, you know, putting my hand on my heart in those moments of witnessing, you know, my 25-year-old son just struggle in so many ways with with the things that are happening in his life. And as a mama, it's hard to separate from that. And yet having to really be in a place of putting my hand on my heart and saying, I trust the process of the universe. I trust his spirit. I trust that there's a greater good happening. So for sure, it absolutely, right now, it's trust. Well, you know, one of the things that I think is so important about that, isn't that interesting? Because that's kind of coming up for me as well. Um, and, and you know, how is it that in the world that we live in now, uh, my sense is, and, and I think it's yours as well, that we've never been at such an incredible place where there's so much information that is available to us. And what I'm referring to is the various intuitions. You yeah. know, what, it doesn't matter what kind of Claire you are, right? Mm-hmm. You know, there's just information. Do you think maybe it's really about us not knowing how to tap into that? Or are we just a little bit more shut down these days? Or maybe it, none of the above? Well, and, and I think, well, I think that there's, I think, think that there's so much happening in our physical world that I don't know if it's as much that we're shut down as it is that we're so chaotic and busy that we're not present in the moment that we could be tapped in. So, you know, in order to hear your intuition and hear your guidance in whatever clear form it's coming in, you've got to be present in that moment. And so many people are multitasking upon multitasking that um, it's difficult to be present and to hear those messages. And then the other part of that is when it's uncomfortable, when it's painful, when it's difficult, we don't want to be present in it. So, you know, then people go and hide in a variety of different ways as well. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a good hider. Uh-huh. I, 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 I'm one of those kids, right? Were you one of the kids that when they always played hide-and-seek, nobody wanted to play with you because they could never find you? <laughs> Right? I was the one that always wanted to be finding people. <laughs> wow. Well, then you and I would have had the marathon hide and seek, right? That would have been that would have been us. But you know, you know, hide and seek. I think is a great, you know, a great. Well, I don't want. To, I don't even know if I can call it a metaphor, but it it is one of these ways that we enter into the world today, right? You yeah. know, this idea of hide and seek with spirit. Wait a minute. Now you see me. Now you don't. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about this because somewhere along the way, we figured out that angels, the angelic realm, you know, all the folks you hang out with, right? They thought, somehow we thought, oh, that's just for Sonny. That's (laughs) not not for Pat or Mm -hmm. Benny. And so what have you discovered now in, in being out in the world and being in front of so many people? What have you discovered is now the theme with folks? Do they really believe they can have what you have, Sonny? You know, I think that on a soul level, I think their spirit speaks to them and, and it knows that that is true, that, that they have access to all of these amazing beings. But I think the head kicks in. And the head, based on all kinds of background, all kinds of experiences and beliefs and teachings and things like that, says, but maybe not. Maybe I'm not worthy. Maybe I'm not deserving. Maybe I'm not good enough. Um, Maybe she has more insight, you know. And the reality of it is the only thing that's different is maybe I have more experience. You know, maybe I've been aware of it longer. But I did the same thing. You know, I did this back-and-forth, hide-and-seek game from the age of 13 when I 
had my experience with my guardian angel until I was 28. I, I would embrace, and then I would shut down, and then I would open up, and then I would disconnect, and then I would beg, and then I would um, run away. And, and I did that for, you know, a good 15 years. Well, and you know, this is really kind of how to get how to how to not get what you want in life. That could yes. be the name of this 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 story we're talking. Yes, about. absolutely. How to, how to not get right. How to not get what you want in life? Play hide and seek with yep. the angelic realm or spirit. Yeah, and and how to prove that you're not good enough and all of these beliefs that we have within us. And I, I remember, you know, as a teenager, thinking, well, why me? Why why would I get to have this experience and other people aren't? And then feeling like I didn't deserve it and waiting until literally several times but literally once I was on my deathbed waiting until I would you know ask for help and ask for support because I didn't feel like I deserved it and I questioned why I would be the one and I think a lot of people ask that question and my answer is always why not Mm -hmm. why wouldn't you be the one you're spirit embodied just like any of us are spirit embodied so why wouldn't you have that experience how could you not well, you know, part of this, too, is as I'm reading your book, it's really kind of cool because it's like, wait a minute, my first experience communicating with the dead. Now, who gets to put that in a book, Sonny? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I would love for you to tell people what that, that was like because, you know, what would a first experience like that be like? And and then what was it about you that that got to say yes to this, Right. Because there's a there's a part of this that is free will, and yeah. I love how you talk about this. Tell tell us a little bit about what that first experience was like for you. Well, so the very first experience I had on any level was actually seeing my guardian angel, and so that that time I was sleeping in bed, and literally I woke up at one o'clock in the morning, I rolled over, and I saw this beautiful, colorful, winged being above my bed. And, and it wasn't so much the visual aspect of it. It was, it was the feeling that I felt along with it, which was peace and calm and, and centeredness and quiet. And that was not my nature at all. I was a very kind of anxious, concerned, worried, fear-based kind of kid at that time. And so I was so calm that instead of what most 13 year olds would do is fly out of bed and say oh my god there's something in my room and (laughs) run I literally rolled over and went back to sleep I felt so at peace and it was in the morning when my head kicked in and said wait that's that's not normal that I ran downstairs and told my mom and said you know this is what happened and she said well Sunny that was your guardian angel and and then she went on to say she'd come into my room at 11 o'clock I was sleeping and had prayed over me and asked God and the angels to protect me because she was concerned about my emotional and mental state and so that experience that day, and I didn't even believe in angels. I, I, I knew, you know, I knew angels to be figurines. I didn't think that there's something that you that really was out there. Um, and so when I had that experience, it said, there's a whole other world. And <clears throat> why did I tap into it? How? You know, I, I, I didn't know that answer, but I knew that I wanted to feel that way again. And then shortly after that is when I started having experiences where I would see deceased energies and, 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 and beings and auras and all kinds of things and start recognizing what they were and what they represent. Wow. And, you know, I love this, too, because, you know, we get to talk about this now, and maybe maybe we'll have time to really talk about, you know, how the journey you know, becomes uh, revealed for you, as you talk about in this book as well. And for those of you out there, you know, the book is called The Love Never Ends, Messages from the Other Side. You know, Sonny Don Johnston joining me here today. Sonny, before we go to the phones, because we, we got people waiting, we got people here, uh, before, we get, before we go to our amazing listeners they're the best Uh, let folks know the best way they can get a copy of the book and also find out more about you Uh, the best way is go to my website sunnydonjohnston with a t dot com Uh, all the books are available on on my um, in my boutique there which I'm happy to sign if they'd like it signed they can go to Amazon Barnes and Noble the books are available there as well Uh, but just go to my website Facebook page you know all those all those good social ways to connect. I'm on all those as well. 
I love it. Uh, and for those of you out there, you can figure out how to schedule time, how to find out, you know, more about the book. You know, as my friend Greg Braden says, I love this book. I do, too. Yeah. And there's a reason why. And you're going to hear it right now. Mr. Benny, let's go to the phones because we have fabulous listeners waiting to talk with Sonny. All right. We can do that. We'll take Missy calling in from Bellevue. Missy, welcome to the show. Hey, Missy. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, Missy. Hey, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, I'm writing a book, and it's involving this um, guy named Nick. And I was just curious, um, when is he going to kiss me? <laughs> uh, wow. Give me your birth date, Misty. One twenty-three sixty-six. One twenty-three sixty-six. Great. Okay. All right. Fet- ready? Ready, uh, Missy? Okay. So, so this is what it feels like. It feels like um, I think you're going to have to be the one. <laughs> I don't know if you like that answer or not, though. It feels like I just see open hands like it's in your hands. So you're going to have to be the one to, to take the step. The other thing I feel, there's a lot of change happening around you, and I feel like um, your inner world and your outer world are starting to line up more. They're becoming more congruent. Uh, and so you're probably feeling some of the effects of that also as you as you kind of get 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 yourself aligned specifically in your kind of your mind, body, and your spirit. Like everything's starting to come together. But in doing that, sometimes there's a little bit of a challenge around that. So just keep your seatbelt on for a little bit. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you bet, honey. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh-huh. And, uh, isn't it kind of cool? It's like sometimes you hear stuff that you think, yeah, that is definitely not the field of dreams that I was messing around with. But, boy, what it's what a good idea to get some additional insight. Sometimes, don't you think, Sonny, we, we are so close to things. That, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but I've always had to get some, some outside perspective. Oh, yeah. I mean, for yeah. sure, I think that, you know, one of the things for me has been because this is the work that I do, then – you know, people think that, okay, well, then you don't, like I said, you don't have any challenges. Just, it just comes to you. You just know what to do every time. No, we have to get quiet, and we have to sit within ourselves, and we have to ask for help and support, sometimes from physical beings and sometimes from non-physical beings, depending on what the situation is. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, you know, absolutely in life, we get to face all the challenges that we absolutely get to talk about uh, that show up in our lives. Mr. Benny, who do we have next? Yeah, we'll take Naomi calling in from Seattle now. Welcome to the show, Naomi. Yeah, welcome, Naomi. What can we do for you today? Okay. Um, I'm, I guess I'm still in this phase about my career. I was starting to, I'm a vocalist, and so I decided that I wanted to put my own band together. And just about the time I was getting everybody all lined up and ready, I got ill. I was like, hmm. okay, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing that right now. Oh, Okay. Mm. You know, I, I don't. I don't feel Naomi like it's that you're not supposed to be doing it. What I feel like is there's some fears that are showing up for you, and the illness was the manifestation of some of those fears. What I heard as you were uh-huh. speaking was the fear of moving forward, and also something okay. around trust. So it's almost like it. It, it almost feels to me like. Uh, you you trust what you can do, but then putting a band together, you've got to put your trust and your faith in them that everyone's on the same page and, and, and I'm ready to take that step. And so my sense is that the illness really manifested from that kind of unresolved fear that you might not have been necessarily conscious of. But now with that awareness, um, try to tune into that energy and see what you can do to start to move through it stepping into trust and stepping into moving forward. I actually think that's where you need to go, and I see three key people in um, in connection to this for you. So stay open, but, yeah, you got to move a little bit of that fear energy, honey. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You well, bet. I'll tell you, got to move the fear energy. That's got to move the fear. Like the yeah. Yeah. That that's coming through for all of us right now, Mr. Benny. While we're in the flow, let's keep it going before we go to break. And for those of you out there trying to get in, and I know you are, um, as uh, the phone lines become open, please go ahead and dial back one eight hundred nine three zero two eight one nine. What's the, who do we have next, Mr. B? Yeah, Jennifer calling you from Seattle. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. 
Hi, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. I, I was wondering if my um, deceased husband had any message for me. Uh, Jennifer, can you give me um, your um, birth date, please? Three twenty-three sixty-eight. Thank you. Um, and how long has he been passed? Uh, since 2010, February 2010. Okay. There's something about the number three that stands out for you, and I'm not sure what that is in connection to, but I just keep seeing it everywhere I look, the number three. So I want to share that with you. And then what I heard before you even asked the question was, it is time. It is time. And I, I heard it three times. It is time. So I feel like there's something that you're contemplating or ready to make, um, a, take a step forward in, and there might be a little bit of uh, hesitation between the head and the heart. And, I, and this is a very um, strong male voice saying, it is time. Do you understand that? Well, I've been thinking about uh, going into self-employment. I'm okay. wondering if that's what I, it's I, about. Yeah, absolutely. It feels very clear to me. Like, whatever is sitting in the, and you're wiggling, you're going back and forth, and should I, shouldn't I? And I just so hear yes. very clearly, it is time. And underlying that is, I, I feel like um, he was a cheerleader for you, like he would be supportive of you and supportive of this step. And so it's almost like it's giving you that validation of, yeah, it's time to do it. Don't question it. And I feel like jump in with both feet. And the other thing is you're born on my birthday. So March 23rd is also the day that I'm born. Rockin' day right there. Um, and so what I feel like is be aware of the difference between your head and your heart and stay in your heart. Your heart's actually guiding this. Your head is what starts to talk you out of it. Hmm. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, yeah, you bet, sweetie. Awesome. I love this. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. Sonny, while we're waiting for the you know folks to call in here, um, one of the things I read in the book was, and, and don't ask me where I picked it up from, but I know you talk about the fear of death. You also talk about the fear of life, and I want to have that chat with you here for a minute. Sure. Um, you know... I don't know if there is a relationship between the fear of death and the fear of life. And what do I even mean by that question? You know, let me give you an example. Sometimes for me, I wake up and I think, oh, my God, I am afraid I am not going to get done the things I really want to get done in this lifetime. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not saying I wake up and I see, you know, visions of the walking dead. It's not that kind of fear. Right. But some days it feels like that kind of fear. Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't really understand the relationship between the fear of living and the fear of dying. And I would love to get your insight. Well, you know, I think that I think it depends on where you're coming from. And and it doesn't sound to me so much for you like it's it's, um, I I don't fear the feeling of death. What I feel like is not living to my full potential, like not being able to experience and share and give everything that I want to give in this lifetime. And for a lot of people, the fear of death holds them back from that, meaning they spend so much time worrying about what they're not going to get done, that they're going to run out of time, that they ever, never actually stay in, in, they're never actually present in the experience of living because they're, they're losing their life to worry and fear. Mm. And I think that there's a difference between having some natural fears and some, you know, the fear comes up, we acknowledge it, and it moves through, than it holding us hostage, and then we're not living our lives. We're really just get, continuing to get by based on fear after fear. So all we do is jump through fears, and that isn't living. That's really a, a, a very long journey of dying, in, in my experience. So it's recognizing that you're always going to have fear there, but how... How much attention do you give it, and then do you respond to it? You know, I, I'm a big believer in acknowledging the fear, same as yeah. acknowledging the ego, recognizing, okay, you know, what I say in my head when my ego kicks in is, okay, thank you for sharing, and I'm not interested. I'm going over here. And then I use an affirmation or a positive feeling or thought or whatever to move it. I feel the same way with ego. Oh, okay, that's interesting. That's really what's coming up for me, and that's what I'm afraid of. Thank you for that awareness, and now I'm choosing this or that. That's 
the land of the living. But if I stay in this stuck energy and just keep pushing it down like a like a beach ball, you know, then then all of my attention is on that beach ball. And as soon as I look one direction real quick, that beach ball pops up and it's just it's consistent and we don't we don't ever really live fully present then. Oh, I love this. And as I said before, this is what I love about this show, and this is what I love about Sunny. You know, in the game of hide-and-seek that we were going to be playing, and I was going to hide and she was going to seek, she just won. (laughs) She just found me. Uh, And, you know... (laughs) That's two out of three, Sonny. <laughs> well, what I love about this is, you know, I, I, I want to bring a conversation to the forefront. Uh, and when we come back from break, we, we, Nanette, Patty, Maureen, we will go right to the phones. I, I want to bring a conversation to the forefront for the millions of people that we know of that are not able to take their lives, and what's the term we use in human potential, to the next level. Sometimes it's not even a level. It's to the next breath. Sometimes we're not able to do that because we're immobilized. What have you discovered from your the angels, from the guides? Can we call upon them? Absolutely, we can call upon them. And, and I think for me, that's actually what started to change my life, you know, a lot of people don't know all the background about me, but, but a lot of my challenge and struggle, I was a teenage um, pregnant, um, you know, single mom and um, lived in, you know, a, a, literally a shack with, you know, um, no air conditioning, no heating, mice running over us in the middle of the night, on welfare and food stamps with an alcoholic boyfriend. That was, that was where I was, and I didn't know how to get out of it, and I didn't know that I deserved actually to get out of it. And when I started getting... Um, when I started really asking for help from the angelic realm, because they felt safer to me than the physical world, actually, at that time, um, I, I started to have little glimpses of my value, little glimpses of love, little feelings of um, worthiness. And that's what started to move me in a direction to not only do the work I needed to do to heal those issues that caused me to be in that situation, all in my own choice, um, and move into a place of self-love and self-worth and, and, and recognizing my value. And that was through the support of the angels, and it was asking for that help. And then, you can't just ask, but receiving it. Big key right there, receiving. Yeah. And, you know, we'll talk about receiving when we come back. We're going to take a short break when we come back. You know, I want you all to know, uh, you know, Sunny is joining us here today. The book is The, the Love never ends messages from the other side uh and when we come back we'll go right to the phones nanette patty and maureen we will make sure we get you in and we will go ahead and probably even skip the next break uh for those of you just tuning in sunny dawn johnston joining us joining the show here today it's so great to have her on the show uh book is getting rave reviews as of course she does on a regular basis let's take a short break everyone we'll be right back I know my rent was gonna be later about a week ago. I worked my ass off, but I still can't pay it though. But I got just enough to get off in the Tune in to Sheer Alchemy with Leslie Fontaine on TransformationTalkRadio.com and get ready to stir up your passions, identify your blocks, and shift into an entirely new existence. Leslie Fontaine is a transformation catalyst and clairvoyant who uses her intuitive and energetic gifts to catapult listeners into living the life they were born to live. Whether it's shifting from scarcity to abundance, from emotional pain into joy, or from illness into health, Leslie will help you step into the true essence and power of all that you are with the help of the Ascended Masters and Archangels. You will not be the same. Visit TransformationTalkRadio.com for show dates and times and LeslieFontaine.com to say yes to explosive abundance. 
naturopathic doctor, founder of the Martha's Vineyard Holistic Retreat, and author of the New York Times bestseller, 21 Pounds in 21 Days, Dr. Ronnie Deleuze has helped tens of thousands of people, including celebrities and athletes, with her message of lifestyle change. Now, Dr. Ronnie Deleuze wants to help you. You, too, can be saved. Email Dr. Ronnie Deleuze at info at ronniedeleuzeonradio.com and visit mvholisticretreat.com. Dr. Ronnie Deleuze, your partner in wellness. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R patshow.com for listening times in your area. Enlightening, humorous, and compassionate. Listen live to The Kelly Ballard Show, insight and inspiration from the great beyond. Kelly is a fourth-generation medium and intuitive who covers topics ranging from grief, spirit guides, and listening to your intuition. Kelly can help you get answers and guidance from the other side with a little bit of humor and a lot of healing. Tune in to The Kelly Ballard Show, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to the Dr. Pat Show, Transformation Talk Radio, TransformationRadio.fm, uh, and any other station that's picking us up that I always forget to mention, you can email me and I'll make sure I mention them again. But thanks to all the people that have helped us take this message out across the world. Thank you for our affiliates in Australia, CRN, WBLQ, KKNW, and everybody in between. Thank you for tuning us in and picking up the show. And it is so great to be connecting with all of the listeners listeners all over the world and to bring you people like Sonny Don Johnston. That's what I, that's what I totally love doing. I love being able to have you get to meet people like Sonny, people in the world that have found a way to live their fullest lives and then to be of service of others. Sonny, again, one more time, the website for folks, and then we'll go right to the phones. Uh, my name is Sunny Dawn Johnson, S-U-N-N-Y, D-A-W-N-J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N.com. And, uh, and they can find me on social media, Facebook, and, you know, all that good stuff, too. Yeah. And for those of you that missed any part of this, the show will air again tonight. Just go to Transformation Talk Radio. Uh, and then if you do miss it or you don't have a way to get it, um, there's also a way to download our app. Nowadays, all you need to do is have a smartphone and you can listen live through Spreaker or Transformation Talk Radio. I, I don't even know. Now I'm getting into an area that is so far beyond my wheelhouse. Benny, let's get to the phones if we could. Yeah. Patty from Phoenix. Welcome to the show, Patty. Hey, Patty. Hi. Welcome. How can we help you today? Um, thank you so much for taking my call. Uh, I met a guy online, and things were going really well, and then all of a sudden he quit communicating. I get the message that I'll hear from him again in September and that he's doing some, like, internal work. Um, what insight do you have on this? Because I'm not really sure if it's a good message or it's just wishful thinking on my part that I'll hear from him again. I actually do think you'll hear from him again, and... Um, what I what I heard was that he got scared, um, so that might go along with your doing internal work. I don't know if he's the guy for you, but I think he's um, somebody, meaning like a long term, but I think he's somebody that's interesting for now. Um, so if he comes back in the picture, it, I got the number six, so to me that's going to represent six weeks. Uh, and, it, and it feels like, yeah, he'll come back around. I don't know that you're going to necessarily want to hang on and just wait for him um, because I think he's got some internal conflict that's happening within him. Okay, and there's someone better. Someone better. Bigger, better, greater. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Keep That's an eye out. In November um, 11, November stands out a lot in your um, energy for um, for moving forward with relationships. So I, I would I, 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 I would probably just say, I'm just going to hang out a little bit longer. Perfect. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Yeah. Wow. Mr. Benny, I know we've got more folks. Let's do it. Yeah. Maureen calling in from Port Orchard, Washington. Maureen. Hi, Maureen. How are you doing? Hi there. Fine. Hi, Maureen. Hi. What's your question, sweetheart? Can you hear me? Yep, yeah. I sure can. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. can you hear what, me? What do you need to know? I need to know your question. Oh, uh, when am I going to move? I would like to move. Um, and there's a couple of things in the way right now, but I think they can be cleared up. But I would like to definitely, I, I want to stay in the same town. I just need uh, a different house and a lot less property. Uh, so what I saw was the number seven, uh, and I believe that's representing seven months. Um, but I also felt February is significant, and right now I'm not even counting August, September, October, November, December, January. So February stands out to me as important for you, but I did see the number seven as likely the move. It feels to me like it's going to be less than five miles away from where you are now. It's actually a very um, close move. Uh, and I feel like there is an opportunity is going to come. It's almost like through someone that you know in, in in moving forward. So I would make sure you share this with some of the people in your kind of inner circle and say, hey, if you know anybody that knows anybody, um, because I feel like what what you're what you have to offer, there's somebody already looking for, and it's just getting that word out there. Okay, because I'm getting the feeling that the house that I would like or need um, may not even be up for sale yet. That may be why it's seven months, because it feels, I, I don't feel like it's right away, but it's definitely, there's already energy in motion. So, it, okay. for example, if the, if the house isn't up for sale yet, then there's not anything you can do outside of getting your energy lined up when being specific and clear about what it is that you want, so that when that timing, when that timing is right, when it starts to open up, um, and I get the I get a P name also. I, I don't I, I'm not really pulling what like a Patty or a Patricia or something like that. It's not that Pat um, that I think is significant in this as well for you, Maureen. Okay, so I'll wait about seven months then. Well, I wouldn't wait seven months. Seven months I think is when it's going to happen. So I'd be open and keeping my attention focused now. Okay. 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 Real good. Well, thank you. You bet, sweetheart. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we, Mr. Benny, what do we, uh, what do we have? We can snag another caller. It's Nanette now calling in from Kirkland. Nanette. Hey, Nanette. Oh, hi. Welcome. How can we help you? Hello. Thank you so much for taking my call. You um, bet. I'm wondering um, what is more or less in the future for me and how I can improve myself or what I should do. Um, Nanette, when's your birth date, honey? February 1st. Okay. Um, well, so what I what I was feeling, and I asked your birth date just to see what, what vibration you're in this year, 2015, for you. And it, it feels to me like what I would suggest you do is anything that helps you keep your mind clear. So I feel this kind of conflict between head and heart, this struggle with, with um, your mind and kind of the stinking thinking, kind of negative thoughts, and then your spirit really, um, I feel like you're a nurturer and, and really want to be in a very loving place, but I think sometimes your head, you're not very nice to yourself all the time. So th that, those negative thoughts, I feel like there's like a fight going on inside of you at times. And in the vibration that you're in, this year is really a year of manifestation for you, meaning focusing your attention on, on what you want and how you want to move forward in life and what you want to create. And so any thoughts that you have are adding power to that. And not that that's not the case for everyone all the time, but specifically for you and the vibration that you're in, it's even more, it's more powerful. It's like a, you know, a 100-watt bulb instead of a 10-watt bulb. And so I feel like, you know, positive affirmations, doing some mirror work, um, um, meditation, um, uh, anything, walking, anything that keeps you uh, with a clear mind. And I feel like outdoors is important for you as well, Nanette. Okay. Understand? All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thanks, Katie. Good, good. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, th let's do this. Um, when we take a look at things, I want to talk for a minute, if we could, uh, as Sunny, about, you know, how folks can tap in, you know, what it is that will help us 
gain some insight, not just to the tough questions, right, that show up in life, but, you know, how can we call upon, you know, folks that have moved on, people from beyond the grave, so to speak? How can we call for help from them? You talk about it in the book. And I then do. there's a couple stories, one of them, a life-saving message from beyond. I would love for you to talk with this a little bit. Um, clearly in our pop culture today, you know, this is a topic that is getting a lot of coverage, including with a major t- TV series uh, that's called Proof. Mm-hmm. So I think it's time for us to chat about it. <laughs> sure. Sure. Well, you know, so the first thing I would just want to say to everyone listening is that everyone that has a heart connection with someone that's passed on, someone in spirit, has the ability to connect with them. And I think that in a lot of these shows and in a lot of the even teachings, there's been um, some false information put out that Mm -hmm. only special people or certain people have the ability to connect with those that are in spirit. And I believe it's completely 100% not true. Uh, If you have a heart connection with someone and they pass on, you have the strongest connection. You actually have a better connection with them than me, a medium, would have. The challenge is that you have to learn how to tap in and tune in to their energy. You have to learn their new language and learn the way that they express and and send you signs and symbols and messages. So I think the first thing is um, you can learn how to communicate with your loved ones. Now, you may not be a medium for, you know, everybody else, but you absolutely are for those people that are connected to you. So I think that's important, first of all, as as a statement of, um, empowerment and ownership over our own gifts, number one. Um, and then what I would say is that, so, so sometimes people, when someone dies, you know, initially especially, everybody only focuses on the positive things, all the great things about them. And they miss them and they want them in their lives, and so they're, they're like, oh, I, I really wish they were here to tell me, you know, um, give me positive feedback or whatever. And one of the things that I think is kind of funny, but it's true, is that, when our loved ones pass, um, they still have that personality. That takes a long time for that personality to shift. And so if they were someone that would say, I hate your haircut, they'll tell it to you in spirit, too. Like, they'll be like, oh, that haircut, uh, you know, <laughs> or, oh, I can't believe she's still wearing those kind of clothes. Or, like, they'll have comments like that. So be mindful of what you're asking your loved ones, too, because if you didn't like their answers here, you're probably not going to like their answers there either. And then, well, yeah, right. I mean, we think all of a sudden they, they move on, and I'm not going to hear the personality of my uncle come through. That right. all of a sudden he's not going to tease me or this, that, or the other thing. Right, and, and, and that's just not the case. They do, and, and a lot of times it's quite funny. Um, so I think that's important. But ultimately, this is the way to connect with our loved ones is, number one, to learn presence. And I'll tell you a real quick story. I um, right. When I was writing this book, uh, there's a... a uh, a title underneath one of the title pages there's a message that says and it's something to the effect of um, you cannot focus on their absence and experience their presence and that statement is extremely powerful I was in the, I had already written the book and we were in the editing process of the book and I was in the tub and normally when I'm in the tub I keep a notebook I keep my iPad I have a pen because I always get messages in water that's one of the the connectors for me, so to speak. And so I was in the tub, and I was just thinking about a, a part of the book that I was editing and trying to decide kind of how to shift it up a little bit. And I heard that statement very clearly from Spirit. Um, it, you cannot focus on our absence and experience our presence. And so I jumped out of the tub because I didn't have any of that stuff by me. I must have cleaned up that day for some reason. And I ran across out of my bedroom and across the hall into my office, and I typed it up on my computer real quick, and then I ran back to jump in the tub, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that was such a profound message because I felt it. And then I looked over, and I realized my son had four of his friends over in his bedroom. I thought, oh, boy, hopefully they didn't see anything, but it was an important message. So when I sat with that and I listened to Spirit, basically what they were saying is when you focus on the loss, you experience more loss. And when you focus on their presence, and not in the same form they were in, but their spirit is still present. And when you focus on their presence, you will experience their presence. And I found that to be very profound because 
in my experience, not only as, as a medium, but also in my own personal experience of the loved ones that I've lost, that is extremely true. We have to be present and, and be focused on their presence. And when we sit and talk about how they're not here and we've lost and we miss, we're focused on their absence, and that, that, that builds a, a longer bridge, so to speak. Well, you know, I wanted to talk to you about this, um, you know, this idea of the love never ends. That is the title of your book. And boy, I'll tell you, it is a very, very powerful, it's a powerful title. And yet it's so hard to articulate this sense of it. You know, the love never ends. Um, And yet at the same time, we hear stories from people about what they feel about loss, what they feel about emptiness, um, and how love just is eternal, how they'll always love someone. I I was at at an event the other day, and a gentleman talked about the loss of his wife, who he was married to for 50 years. Uh, and she had just passed and uh, you could hear a pin drop in the room right but he wasn't sad he was you know he wasn't like that he was just talking about the love I would love for you to talk about this for a minute because while we may not want the pain of the loss to stay with us forever you know the love of someone doesn't have to always be that thing that causes us pain but yet it does sometimes doesn't it 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 does sometimes and i think that when we start to change our perspective you know we've as a society we've also been taught at least i was and and I, I, i most people when the person dies they're dead they're gone and it's only been really in the last 20 years and probably even more recently in the last 10 years that it's even a topic that's talked about in a different way uh, with shows like this where we have the freedom to say these things. You know, I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah in the 70s, and this was not something you talked about even to your neighbor. You know, it just, it just was not talked about. And so I think we have to, we have to start to realize that we've, we've had a lot of training and we've created a lot of belief systems that then it's we have to do it differently, and, and it, so it takes a little bit more energy to, to transmute some of those old beliefs and thoughts. But that love energy, that heart connection, people experience it in, in these just amazing, amazing, amazing ways, just like you were saying that, you know, people could feel that energy in the room of love. But we do go through the pain when we focus on the loss and the physical loss is what I find. Even people who really do believe that I'm connecting with them and I'm seeing the signs, you know, my grandmother shows me shows up as a butterfly or, or my uncle shows up as a hummingbird or I get these signs of, of hearts around. They they know that that's a sign from them, but they feel the loss physically and, and that's the part that I think so many people have such a hard time about and a time with. But when we start to focus on the, the gifts and the blessings that are coming by very by being very mindful and being very present and tuning in to to the energy that they're sending us through those symbols, it literally can fill up that part of us that has the hole, that has the void. You know, I just in the last five weeks, four weeks, mm-hmm. um, I've I I have attended two um, one twenty five year old boy, one twenty six year old boys. Um, funerals. One died of brain cancer. One was the motorcycle accident. My son's best friend. And in both of those experiences, um, because I do this work, I can be more present than than some people that are in their grief. Um, and and not that I didn't have sadness, but I see it from a different perspective. In both of those experiences, while I was at the viewing, I received messages from both of those young men that I shared with their family members and their friends to be able to help lighten their hearts. And that, I believe, the reason that they gave me those messages was because of that. They have been speaking since, since immediately after their passing, but the, the family members didn't recognize it until I said something. And then once I said something, they said, oh, that's, that's what that means, or that's his sign, and then oh, it brings them this peace and this connection and, 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 and makes them tap into that love energy instead of that pain energy. And so I think that's 
part of well, one of the reasons I wrote this book was to help people to move out of the grief, not to not acknowledge that it's there and not to even ignore it or deny it, but just to recognize that we can have it and transmute it and shift it into that true vibration of love, which is what it was before it was grief. You know, and this is a conversation now that's come up a couple of times, you know, for me as well. You know, there have been a couple of instances of, of, uh, of, of young people uh, just, uh, whether it's accident or illness or uh, in, in other cases, suicide, you know, just having a tough time of things. And I wanted to ask you this question about suicide. I shared with you that that was the path my mom took when I was a young child. Mm -hmm. And there are many things we believe about it. Yeah, and now yeah. that it's so public, though, Sonny, right, you know, with Robin Williams and others it, that have been out in the media, uh, I would love to know uh, what your thoughts are about that, what you've learned. Well, I have experienced three suicides in the last five years myself, mm -hmm. um, and, and one very, very close to me. And so um, I, I've talked a lot on this subject, so I'm so glad you asked, because I think that there, even though we do talk about it, there's still such a stigma around it. Yep. Um, and in, in my, and I'll share my experience as briefly as I can, um, it was my husband's very best friend, and um, he he shot himself, and um, we were the second people that were called, and they lived a mile away from our house, so we went over immediately to be with his girlfriend. And um, and so this will give you an example of, of, of how things can shift. So immediately um, after the police left and everything was taken care of and they removed his body, nobody wanted to go into the home. And so I went into the house to turn out the lights and lock things up. When I went in there, I could feel the presence. It didn't feel like Mike, but I could feel the presence of a very heavy, dark, um, angry, shameful energy is the best way I would describe it. So much so that I felt like it was literally pushing me out of the house. So I flipped the lights off, I locked the door, and I left. And I, of course, you know, that was, at, I don't know, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. Of course, we didn't sleep all night. We got up the next morning, and my spirit said, you need to go back to that house. You've got to clear that house. Well, at the same time that I had that experience, and I knew what I needed to do was I needed to help Mike um, release all of that physical, human um, emotion and shame and guilt so that he could move on, so he could go to the light. And my husband, who isn't into any of this, the same morning, within a five minutes, said, I need to go to the house. I need to clean the house, like clean up the mess that he had left from, from shooting himself. And so my husband and I went to the home together. Um, I went in first for about 45 minutes, and I did... I just infused the space with love. I brought in as much love as I could. I called in the angels. I called in ascended masters, and I did this beautiful ceremonial um, clearing. And then my husband and I together cleaned the physical space. And after, so that took about two hours. After two hours, um, we had a couple of people come over to get some things for some of the family members, and they said, my God, I can't, this place feels so beautiful. I can't believe that, that something so terrible happened in such a beautiful light energy place. And what I knew was that what had happened is the love that we carried and the, the support of the spirit world, the angels, guides, um, ascended masters and helpers, was allowed us to change the vibration from a negative, shameful, ugly death to a sacred space. And it was a sacred space. It was where his physical life ended, but the, he still had love. And there was still love in his heart. He didn't have it for himself, and that was part of the reason that those that result happened. So I called his girlfriend, and I said, and because she said, I'll never walk in that house again because of the memories, because she was there. And I said, listen, I would just, if you feel like you can come over, I'd like you to just come over and, and see if how the space feels because wow. it's different and she 
she came, and she lived there for a year and a half longer. I And I love that you share that, and I love that we stopped and talked about that mm-hmm. because it is the it is the elephant in the room, so to Absolutely. speak, for so many people. Absolutely. Yeah. And they are they they are supported and loved yeah. and lo- and lit up. It's not a, okay, a hell and damnation kind of experience from from my perspective and I've lived it very close. Right. Right. Thank you so much for sharing that. But more, most importantly, thank you, Sonny, for all that you do. And thank you for being here on the show. Oh, thank um, you. It's been thank an honor and a pleasure. One last quick question. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with? <laughs> the love never ends. It just changes form. Sunny Dawn Johnston, everybody. I'm Dr. Pat. I want to thank all of you for tuning us in, turning us on. Benny, thank you for pushing all the right buttons. And thanks to all of our listeners and callers for what you do and how you bring the light into so many lives. Believe it or not, people that you don't even know. We'll see you next time. Sing it.